Hello, my name is Lucas Graham and this is an interview for Fast Forward magazine. I basically started singing professionally when I was 11 in a church choir and I was a soprano soloist from the age of 12. So I've, I've, I've been singing professionally for more than 10 years with choir and theatre and stuff like that. After that I met uh, Magnum, Lovestick and Ristorp, my, my three um, fellow musicians, and I realized that we had something very, very special there and, and it was maybe more, uh, it was maybe better to go do the songs myself with these guys on stage. That the band could meet in the jazz club and play once, twice, three times a month um, in a small concert hall, meaning we could always fill it. And when we started upgrading to bigger venues, uh, the, the following we had already had followed us, it was with us. So this is a very long process that, that has evolved into different, with different steps. I think because we did so many concerts before the YouTube videos, and we were already very experienced and we already knew how the sound was live, all we needed was the finished package. Um, Lucas Graham is, is kind of the, the headline and underneath Lucas Graham you've got Backbone Productions, which are the two producers that we have, that we work very, very closely with. You have Magnum playing bass, and he's playing bass on most of the album. Ristorp, one of the pianist, who has also recorded some, uh, some saxophone and, and, and been producing some of the album. And you have Lovestick, the drummer, who has also put some... He's been uh, helping writing Criminal Mind. He helped the chorus and also put some live drums to make it more a better sound for the record. And then you have me. <laughs> so I guess you could say Lucas Graham and me, I'm like the tip of the iceberg, the, 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 the icing on the cake. And if you don't have this whole solid background of musicians and producers, then you have nothing. Because I can't write music and I don't know notes. I don't know what key I'm, say, I'm singing in. I just do what I do. And then you have the musicians and the professionals helping me do that. <laughs> like, sometimes my producers would say to Magnum, Lovestick, he's told me, listen guys, we've got this new track, we've got this new beat, do you like it? And maybe I like it, maybe I don't like it, maybe I don't like it to begin with and I like it later. And sometimes uh, I would come in and I'd be like, oh, I have this new line for a chorus, I, or maybe it's a bridge, but I don't know where to fit it. And I sing it and I'm like, oh, maybe it's not so good, and Magnum would be like, fuck, that's good. And Magnum would be then start thinking, okay, how would the bass sound? if she was singing like that. And Mark would already begin like, how would the drums sound if he was singing like that and the bass was like that? And then Ristorp would go to the piano and say, but then this is the chord, this is the chord we're gonna use. So it's, it's very much, depending which hands started, the other hand will finish it. It's, we don't have a formula or, and I think that's very good that we don't do everything the same way all the time, you know? It was a coincidence that we chose to do soul. I think it was the, the, a combination of my background and the producer background and also uh, the, that we have no guitar so it's easy for us to not do rock music. <laughs> um, so we were thinking of what is this? Because it was some kind of pop but what kind? It's not R&B, it's not pop rock so, and we realized it must be something more hip hop, more soul or more gospel. So why not make a song only with drums, piano, bass and one vocal? One vocal, that's it. For me, I just, I don't understand why you need more. The whole mission with the music is getting people to listen and not trying to be louder than them. Because if people are listening to you, you don't need to be louder. I'd say that people are very thrilled and, uh, and infatuated by what we do because nobody else is doing it at the moment. And what people like about our songs, as far as I can see, it's the simplicity. It's this everyday thing. It's a song about being drunk in the morning. It's a song about your criminal friends. It's a song about your girlfriend, or a song about the nice guy in the clubs, or a song about drinking red wine with this nice girl, you know. And I'm just, I don't want to be singing about my big car and look at my expensive rings and I've got a gold chain. I think it's just an album about being a 22 year old, 23 year old, 21 year old man basically trying to figure out what the fuck is life about. Like, we have this philosophy that says that 
it's all about the girls. It's all about teenage girls. And then kind of after a while it dawned us on us that it's all about the girls is also the fact that, hey, life is basically just about the girls. Unless you, you, unless you don't like the girls. If you, and I, I don't know, it, it, it's just a very, very down-to-earth album about loss and pain and melancholia, but also about these happy times you have with your friends when you're drunk in the morning. Um, but it's, it's very mixed. And I think it, it demands an older audience than to listen to it. I don't think 14-year-olds might not get the whole content. But I hope they will. I have no plans. Uh, I think no plan is the best plan. <laughs> then you can't fuck it up. If you don't have the plan yet, you can't fuck it up. <laughs>